the University in Washington, D.C. With the following degrees in Master's of Business Administration in Finance and Investments with a Human Resources Concentration and a Master's of Science in Project Management, Mr. Young's professional career includes approximately 15 years with Fortune 500 companies including Bell, Atlantic, MCI, Sprint Next, and various consulting engagements in the areas of billing, customer service, engineering, finance, information technology, network security, operations, product development, and software quality assurance. Mr. Young has taught a variety of college business courses, including ones at NOVA, such as business communication, entrepreneurship, introduction to business marketing, and organizational behavior for the past five years. In 2012, Mr. Young created a nonprofit to provide educational services to at-risk communities. This nonprofit gives him the opportunity to give back to the community after he was uh, directed to leave high school in 10th grade, graduated at the bottom 8% of his high school class, and attended several colleges prior to becoming actively engaged in the process of learning. These experiences drove him to create his nonprofit. So I would like to take this opportunity to now pass it over to tonight's presenter, S.L. Young or Sly. Well, thank you, Amanda. Can everyone hear me okay? I, you just give me a couple of green check marks on the screen so I know that you can hear me. Great, looks like a few check marks are coming in. So uh, as we start to get uh, going with this presentation, I will tell you, and I might be dating myself just a little bit, but when I was watching the Jetsons when I was a child, and they were talking about having these uh, conferences on the telephone where or video conferences where folks could see each other, and then uh, I guess the mother, Jane Jetson, would always set, put her picture up there when she wasn't ready. And I guess I, you know, I laughed at that when I was a child, but it's interesting that I'm using it today, so I'm sort of hiding behind my picture today. So you, you won't be able to see me real time, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the presentation nonetheless. So um, we probably have a few folks who are probably going to be joining as we go along, so I'm going to sort of uh, go a little slow as we get started. So another thing I'll just comment on real quick is hopefully everybody is enjoying the warm weather that we have out here. You know, I, I believe that we're in the uh, spring time frame right now, but uh, given the activities of the last month, I'm not sure if it's going to be winter tomorrow. So with that said, uh, bear with me while I work through the navigation here, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So tonight's discussion is about belief, a powerful component of success. So welcome everyone to the session and what we're going to go through tonight are the reasons that belief is important, the components of belief, the impact of not having belief, the benefits of having belief, tools to move past doubts, fears, and worries towards actionable goals, and the use of belief to your advantage. And another thing that I'll just add is if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to uh, raise your hand and type your question in the chat box down below. And then Amanda, if you see any questions down there, feel free to interrupt me as I go through the presentation because I'd rather answer questions as I go along. So let me go on to the next slide then. So hopefully you've already received your worksheet. So one of the things that I like to to do in these sessions is to have my participants participate. So if you have not received the worksheet, if you could uh, just uh, check the no box. And uh, if there's anybody that hasn't received it, we'll have Amanda send it again. So I'll just wait just a moment. Okay. So it looks like everybody has their worksheet. So on the top of your worksheet, write down what are some barriers to your beliefs. And just list two or three barriers to your belief on your worksheet. On your worksheet. And I'll just give everyone uh, a, a few moments to do that. Okay, we'll, we'll move on to the next slide. So, what are some reasons for being here? So, if you could just use the chat box in the bottom left-hand corner to type in some of the reasons that you're attending this session today.
The chat box is located in the lower left. All right, some of the reasons that individuals attend this webinar is because it's free. You know, that's a great way, reason to attend something sometimes. Maybe didn't have anything else better to do today. Hopefully you're attending because of the reputation of ELI's events or that you're interested in this topic. Maybe there's a, a little bit of curiosity about belief. You're not fully um, aware of how you can use it. Belief might have been a challenge for you. Maybe you're looking to move past a current situation or toward a new direction. And I know if you're like me, early in my college career and my professional career, no one ever discussed this topic with me. So that might be a reason that you attend. But hopefully you want to learn more about the topic belief. So generally speaking, individuals that attend the session are um, feel that this session will be interesting, that they're going to receive some good information, that the topic is valuable, or, you know, it could be some other reasons. But typically when individuals spend their time and effort and energy working on something, it's because they believe that they're going to receive some type of value out of it. Otherwise, we redirect our time, effort, and attention to other activities. But the best reason to attend this session is for you. So hopefully on your side, you're attending the session for yourself. Um, if you're going to get the most value out of something, you've got to do it for yourself. So I always like to say, if I'm going to do it, I'm doing it for me. So looking at the questions so that are on the screen right now, what are your thoughts about the topic of belief? So if you could use the chat box down below to let me know what, what are some of your thoughts about belief. Got a few folks that are typing in right now, so bear with me just a moment. It appears that a few folks are typing, but I don't see anything down here. Amanda, am I missing something? Amanda, are you, are you there? Do you know if uh, I'm missing something? It looks like a couple of folks were typing in, but I didn't see anything in the chat box. Yeah, it looks like they all have uh, privileges to be able to do that. So. They should be able to, um, if not, I'm double checking again. Yeah, because I'm seeing a blue box by several individuals' names that it appears that they are typing something in, but I, I just don't see anything down below. If we don't see anything in a moment, I'll, I'll go ahead and move forward. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and move forward. It looks like we might be having a little bit of technical difficulties uh, in receiving the information that was uh, typed in. So I'll go on to the next slide. So belief is a feeling. Uh, we know whether we, we believe something or not. So we have that feeling that, yep, this is going to work for us. Belief can drive action. So if we believe that there's something better ahead, then we're going to take steps to move forward. Belief can be used to sustain our energy. So when we believe something is worth doing and we've been working on it for a long time, then what we do is we continue to move forward and it continues to give us that energy to move forward. Belief helps individuals to take that initial step. And 
sometimes the hardest part of our journey is taking that initial step. So sometimes we have a fear for a lot of different reasons, but once we take that first step, a lot of times we realize that what was going on in, in our heads, a lot of times is not as bad as the actual reality. And then once we take that first step, the next step is a little bit easier to take. And then belief will help us to continue to move forward. Despite whatever else is going on, if we believe that what we're doing adds value, it will help us to move forward. And there can be other reasons that uh, belief is important to us. So I like to classify belief into three components. So belief can be a concept, a consideration, or a convenience. So as a concept, is this considered to be true? As a consideration, is this true for me? And then as a convenience, is this true at this moment? So when we use these classifications, then we start to evaluate it. So from a concept perspective, this is something that is applied and generally accepted as true. And we're going to do, uh, look at a few examples in just a moment. And then from a consideration perspective, this is something that is a possibility, but there may or may not be a willingness to act. And then from a convenience standpoint, this is something that will be done only if it meets an objective, personal or, or otherwise. So let's go into an example. So a concept could be, and a lot of you have heard this, is that everybody should get a college degree or individuals should pursue a college degree. So that might be the concept. The consideration is if I go to college, I might have additional career options. So that might be my consideration. But maybe there might be some roadblocks that are preventing me from moving forward. But if I get a job that is going to pay for my college, and maybe that was one of the barriers that prevented me from moving forward, then now it suddenly becomes convenient for me to go to college because now I don't have to worry about the financial resources in order to make that investment. So let's look at another example. So the concepts of ethics is discussed a lot of times in business and life and at work. So from a concept perspective, unethical behavior is wrong and should be resolved quickly. So that's the concept. I think that's generally agreed upon that we should resolve any unethical behavior as quickly as possible. The consideration could be an individual observes someone being unethical and decides whether to report it or not. So from a concept perspective, we say that it should be resolved quickly, but from an individual consideration, we might say, well, you know what, I may or may not get involved. But from a convenience perspective, if we previously said we may or may not get involved, but if somebody is potentially blocking us from that promotion that we want to get, and before I said I wouldn't get involved, but now this individual is blocking me, now I may actually get involved. So now it becomes convenient for me to take action. Then if we think about um, a personal example that I use is that I always had a concept that becoming an author is a recognized accomplishment. Years ago, I had a consideration that someday I wanted to write a book, but I didn't know what the book was going to be about. I didn't know when I was going to write it. I just knew that it was a consideration that was important to me. But then it later became convenient to write a book because I realized that I had a message that I could offer to others that would be very valuable. So at that point, it was no longer a consideration, but it now became a convenience for me to be able to share my story with others. So we'll try this one more time to see if there's a, an ability to see anything typed in the chat box, but um, what are some impacts of not having belief? So if you could type try this again and try to type it into the chat box. So, oh, here we go. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. Especially if it's negative, um, L. Smith. 
and Aetna says uh, it will cycle moving forward, definitely. And asthma, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, says no motivation, definitely. Those can be some impacts of not having belief. So the impact of not having belief can be a lack of motivation, burdened by doubts, fears, and worries. And doubts, fears, and worries can be some of the biggest barriers that we can have as an individual. Because a lot of times we put unnecessary doubts, unnecessary fears, and unnecessary worries on something that we're about to do before we even do it to find out if there's even any issues there. Instead of just saying, you know what, I'm going to get up and do this and see what happens. Instead, uh, instead, sometimes we say, oh my God, this is going to be horrible, or this is going to take a lot of time. I don't know if I'm capable. And that unnecessary processing that we have in our mind that will have an impact on our beliefs. So if we have a negative impact on our beliefs through our thoughts, our actions, or our behaviors, we might not pursue an opportunity. So we might miss out on something. Or sometimes we remain in our current situation because if we don't take a risk sometimes by pushing our comfort zones, then we remain in our current situation and we don't necessarily advance. And then, which related to that point, is we don't achieve our potential. So here's another question for you. What are some benefits of having belief? Go ahead and type your answers into the chat box. What are some benefits of having belief? Willing to take more risks, definitely, L. Smith. Um, Edna says, challenge your ability to try, definitely. Any other thoughts? So the benefits of having belief, belief can be used to make a change. If we believe that something's going to be different, it can help drive us to, to make a change. It can lead us to make a difference, and that could be for ourselves or others. Belief can help us do something better, because a lot of inventions came from someone who had a belief that they could build a better mousetrap. They could do something better than what's out there today. I just looked down at a comment from Asma, uh, knowing you're capable of accomplishing your goals. Definitely. Belief helps to drive that. Drives new ideas. Move past a challenge and explore a new idea. And Sina says, think out of the box. Definitely. And that goes back to my example of some inventors. All right, so now we have the next exercise. So on your worksheet, list three adjectives that describe the individual you want to be. So right now, write down three adjectives that describe the individual you want to be. And we'll just take a moment to pause while you do that. I know some people jumped in halfway through the presentation, so I'm going to send out the uh, worksheet one more time for people who haven't been able to, to get it. Okay, great. Thanks. And I'll just pause just a second long. Okay, so some of you should have just received the handout again. So click yes to save it now so that the worksheet will download. Okay, we'll continue to move forward. So belief is important because fear is something that can compel um, us to action or it can cause us to be stifled from achieving personal greatness. So belief can help us to overcome our fears. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give to individuals often is don't worry too much. Worrying too much is it can impact your success before you ever get started because you've you got to believe that it's possible 
without worrying too much. Otherwise, the potential success can be impacted before you ever get started. So don't worry so much about the outcome. Worry about the thing that you need to do next and continue to move along on your journey, whatever that journey is or task, and then make adjustments as you go along. So, for example, I wrote my first book in 2012. Later in 2012, I wrote two more books. I hadn't sold a lot yet, but I continued to write my books. I wrote two more books. And then in 2013, I wrote three more books. And sales still didn't happen as quickly as I wanted. But my personal belief that the material that I was writing had value, and I also had read an article that said, don't just write one book, write more than one book, because if the first book you write doesn't catch on, one of your future books might. And if I gave up on the first book, then I might not ever achieve my success. And years later, I've written about six books, and I'm about to work on my seventh. And slowly but surely, I'm building a market. And now I'm actually using my books in environments that I never thought I would, um, like the jail environment. So you never know where your opportunities are going to come from, but if you believe that what you're working on has value, continue to move forward. So for consideration, believe that your effort will add value even if there aren't immediate results. And sometimes that can be the hardest part to keep moving forward even though you're not seeing results. You have to remember that results might not happen right away. It, you know, a lot of folks say, oh my gosh, this individual was an overnight success. But what they don't realize is there probably was like years and years of work and effort and energy and time that was required in order to get to that point. So if there aren't, if there aren't immediate results, don't worry because if you don't believe in your work, why should anybody else? So for consideration, most people give up just when they're about to achieve success. They quit on the one yard line. They give up at the last minute of the game, one foot from a winning touchdown. H. Ross Perot. All right, now we're going to move into uh, exercise. So I know you probably thought, oh, I've got a webinar. I'm just going to sort of listen and hang out. No, we've got to do some work. I'm a professor, so you've got to do some work. So now we're going to go back to our worksheet, and we're going to fill in the blanks with the adjectives that were written on your paper earlier in the session. So I am adjective number one. I am adjective number two, and I am adjective number three. So I'll give you just a moment to do that. Okay, we'll continue on. So what you have to remember is that if you want to change yourself, change, you've got to change who you are by first determining who or what you want to be. Because it's up to you to drive the change. Nobody can drive the change for you. Others can assist you on your journey, but they can't do the work for you. So you've got to first understand who or what you want to be before you can become it. And then take the actions that are required to drive the change that you want. So after the session, I'm going to send you out uh, a couple of documents. Actually, probably Amanda's going to send that out to you. But uh, there's a couple of documents. One is for your homework. So this worksheet will help you to over, uh, help you to overcome your belief barriers, whatever they might be. So on the far left, you have your belief barrier. So you write down in each box what's your belief barrier. And then in the next box, you write what's the reason for that particular barrier. And then in the next box, you'll write down what action are you going to take to eliminate the barrier. 
And then to hold ourselves accountable, we're going to put a time frame on it so that we can track whether we've achieved our goal and objective or not, our goals and objectives or not. So you'll get this worksheet after the webinar. So I'm going to stop and ask the question again. Self-talk. What is it? Try, um, write your answer in the chat box. What is a self-talk? Have you even heard of it before? The message I send to myself, Laura Smith says. Negative or positive, she, she or he has, sorry. <laughs> Any others? And it says, either the affirmations or condemnations you speak to your life. See, and it says, pep talk to yourself. Definitely. And it could be a lot of other things. So let's continue on. So self-talk is an internal conversation that individuals have with themselves to help direct their thoughts, which could be a new... Um, it could be a new attitude, it could be a change in previous beliefs. So simply put, as you see on the screen, an internal conversation used to help direct one's thoughts, actions, and or behaviors. So we're going to talk about self-talk just a little bit more. So self-talk, why is it important? So a self-talk is important because it helps to override negative thoughts or commentaries from others. And you know, I'm going to stop on this one for just a moment because this one is sort of interesting to me. Because if we think back to when we were little infants, and if you can remember back that far, but if you think you have a child and you have little Johnny there, and little Johnny, you've been waiting for him to start crawling and start walking, and you can't wait for that to happen. But then little Johnny starts crawling, and little Johnny starts walking, and then all of a sudden, what's little Johnny doing? He's starting to get into things. So all of a sudden, we're like, stop, don't, no, can't. And so from the beginning of our life, we're hearing all these negative influences. We're having all these negative influences and hearing all of these negative thoughts and commentaries. So that's why it's important while we're adults and while we're thinking through this that we need to do some reprogramming to create some positive thoughts and intentions. And if you've never thought about this before, if you say your self-talk out loud, it's actually processed four times. So you think it, you speak it, you hear it, and you process it. So four times your brain processes it. So let's look at self-talk by the numbers. So if we think about using our self-talk, three times, several times a day, it can have a great impact on us. So let's just think about this from the numbers, from a numbers perspective. If we use just one self-talk once a day, three times a day, we've now processed a positive self-talk 12 times. If we use our self-talk twice a day, six times, it's actually processed 24 times. And if we use our self-talk three times a day, nine times, and it's actually processed 36 times. So that's a lot of positive thoughts that we could be giving ourselves every day. And it doesn't take a lot of time, energy, or effort uh, because we're only going to do those things, as I like to say, we do things when we're ready to tee them off because we're ready to put to them or give to them our time, our energy, or our effort. So let's continue on. So power of a self-talk. So there's a lot of reasons that our self-talk can be useful, but the biggest use of our self-talk is that it's a powerful tool to reprogram your thoughts and your beliefs. Okay? So by way of example, I'm going to share some of my self-talks. So the first self-talk that I ever used, and I don't even remember 
who told me that I needed to use a self-talk? Did someone tell me? Did I read a book? But my first self-talk goes back to early in my career when I was starting to do a lot of pre um, presentations in organizations and, and Fortune 500 companies. I used to be, and you probably be a little surprised by, by this now, but I used to be really, really shy. Obviously, I've overcome that. But in terms of my presentation skills, what I did was I created this self-talk. And I would stand in front of the mirror three times a day in the morning before I went to work, during lunch, or around lunchtime, and at the end of the day, I would stand in front of the mirror, look myself directly in the eye, and I would say several times, not just three, I'm telling you just to do it three times, but I would say it several times, I would say, I'm a clear, concise, confident communicator. I'm a clear, concise, confident communicator. I'm a clear, concise, confident communicator. And I would just keep saying that. And I was looking into my eyes so that I could look deep into my soul, so that I could have a conversation with myself. So that was my first self-talk. My past self-talk, when I realized that I wasn't living up to my potential, what I said was, you're wasting time doing stupid things and not being the individual that you're meant to be. So that was after I had a realization that I wasn't living up to my potential and I could do more and I could be better. My current self-talk, I'm a superstar. So why would I tell myself any less than that? So I'm not going to say, oh, you're just average. Why would I tell myself I'm just average? Makes no sense at all. I tell myself I'm a superstar. And even if I fall short of my expectations, they're already at the highest level. Don't set your expectations sort of mediocre. Set them high. And maybe to the chagrin of some of my students, I often say, don't strive for perfection. You know, strive for excellence. I'd rather you receive a C in my course and learn something than an A and not have learned anything from our time together or from the experience. So you have to figure out what's important. Is it better for you to get an A just to have that high GPA or do you really want to get something out of the experience? Well, if I'm going to utilize my precious time, energy, and effort, yes, I'm going to strive for that A because I'm a superstar and I can get it. But I'm also going to make sure that I'm maximizing the use of my time. Okay? Let's move on. So self-talk consideration. If you want to be the best, your self-talk should be nothing less than that which directs your mind towards the most success. Because your self-talk directs your mind towards the most success. So just think about that. That's even worth pausing for just a second. I just want to re repeat that. If you want to be the best, your self-talk should be nothing less than that which directs your mind towards the most success. So for your self-talk, what you can do now is refer back to your worksheet and use the sentences completed earlier for your self-talk or the sentences that you created earlier can be used as a basis to create a more in-depth self-talk. So that's your starting point. And you're probably not going to like the next slide, but I'm a professor. I had to do it. Homework. So your homework is to repeat each of the sentences that you created at least three times, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. And if it's too difficult for you to do all three at once, pick one of them and do it for a period of time. And then do another and then do it for a period of time. And then do the next one and do it for a period of time. You know, I just want to stop for just a second and just tell you a quick story. So one of the best pieces of advice I ever received was from someone that was training me for an event. And I needed to get a little bit stronger. So what they told me is, you need to go and 
go to the gym and work out. I'm like, man, I don't want to go to the gym and work out. I, I hate working out. I don't want to do it. But I already had this negative attitude before I even got started. And then what he said to me is, you know what? How about this? Can you go into the gym and work out for five minutes? I'm like, five minutes? That's nothing. I can, I can do five minutes. So I went to the gym, and I worked out for five minutes. And I did that for a few days. And the next time I saw him, he said, did you do your five days? Yeah, I did them. He goes, all right, now we're going to double it. Now, can you go to the gym and work out for 10 minutes? I'm like, 10 minutes? Well, five wasn't so bad. I guess I can do 10. So I went into the gym, gym to do 10 minutes. And then slowly but surely, I built up the time. And it was a lot easier to build up the time gradually versus going to the gym and saying, I'm going to work out for two hours the first day. And by jumping in without understanding what the process is or what the impact is going to be, then I'm already setting myself up for a potential failure. Instead of biting it off a, a few pieces at a time to get started, to get comfortable, to have the most potential for success. So don't forget to do your homework. So what believes power? So first I'll say is that your desire to change has to be greater than your desire to remain in the same position. So you've got to want something more. And if you want something more bad enough, you're going to most times go toward it. But if you believe in what you're doing, it makes it a lot easier. To, to do it. The second thing that I will say about belief's power is that belief can be the fuel that propels your forward progress without any concerns about the challenges that might need to be overcome to achieve success. Very simply put, as you see on the screen, belief propels your forward progress. So what's the secret to success? Well, the secret is sorry, sorry, voice slide there. <clears throat> but the secret to success is believe, hope, and take action. So believe it's possible. Hope, which allows you to move forward based on a belief that something's better ahead. And then take action. Because good things usually don't happen unless action is taken toward a goal. And then, if you believe, there's always prayer. So how do we conquer our fear and maximize belief? So we conquer our fear through what I call my P's. Patience, passion, planning, persistence, perseverance, pain, perspective, purpose, and the most important one on the list, positivity. And these P's can be used to conquer your fears and maximize your belief. So how do you maximize your belief? So belief has value. So belief helps us to move forward towards the unknown. That's one of the greatest strengths related to belief. It helps us to move towards something that we don't even know is in front of us. But we know that when we take the positive steps today, it's going to lead to something better tomorrow. The other value of belief is that it helps you to move forward despite overwhelming odds, setbacks, or challenges. So I don't know if any of you have ever had any great challenges in your life, but I'll just tell you a quick story. As um, Amanda provided some insight early in the presentation, my sophomore year of high school, I failed six out of seven classes. The principal told me to leave school. They said, Stacy, this isn't meant for you. You need to go find a job. Now imagine if I would have followed that advice. I wouldn't be here to, most likely speaking to any of you now. But I had a belief, and maybe a, a smart or maybe a, a not so smart mom who said to me, it's your life, it's your choice. And that was the most important thing that she could have ever done because she put the, the accountability and the responsibility on me to 
make a decision of what I was going to do at that young point in my life. And because she put it on me, it actually propelled me forward and influences everything else I've done the rest of my life. Because a lot of times we allow others to tell us what we should do versus determining for ourselves what we should do and believing in what we're doing and driving ourselves towards our belief. So it wasn't easy for me to overcome. I graduated in the bottom 8% of my class. I went to three colleges before I connected, but I never gave up because I had this belief and this desire to move forward. And despite overwhelming odds and obstacles, I succeeded. And, you know, I went on and I moved forward, which allows me to teach others and inspire others to do the same thing. And then belief is not required to move forward, but it can provide you with the confidence and determination to continue, which is very important. So, we need to remove our belief barriers. So in order to truly believe, we've got to have no fears, no doubts, and no worries. So if we eliminate each of these, then we can remove unnecessary barriers to our beliefs, but most importantly, for our success. So on the next two slides, there's a lot of information, and we're just going to go through it quickly because at the end of the session, this is going to be the second handout that's going to be sent to you. So in order to develop our belief, we need to test our resolve. And I sort of like to think about these questions when I'm doing things. So why is this important? Because if you don't understand why it's important, why are you doing it? Why should this be done? Which is not necessarily the same as the reason that it's important. So you've got to distinguish the two between what's important in terms of why it should be, why this is important, but also why it should be done. So figure that out for you. Then what or who could be impacted if it's done or if it's not done? So if you think about my situation and the journey that I've gone on and how I leverage my belief to get to where I am today, if I hadn't have made those decisions earlier, and a lot of times we don't think about the decisions that we made actually can have potential impacts on others. So because I believed in myself and drove myself forward, it allowed me to obtain numerous degrees, which allowed me to come into a college classroom, which led to me writing books, which led to me going into the jail environment to help others. Could have never have foreseen any of that. But I tell you that because what you're doing today is setting something in action that you don't know what it's going to have a bit or what it's, what benefit it's going to have in the future. So through my journey and doing the things that I've done and overcoming my challenges, it's allowed me to help hundreds, if not thousands, of others through the things that I do. So what might be lost, missed, or compromised if this is not done? And and this is the opportunity cost because the opportunity cost is the cost of giving up X to do Y. And then what are the short-term and long-term costs, including the opportunity costs? And then what are the short-term and long-term risks? Because I always like to think about things in terms of risk, the expected and not as expected or not as likely. And what I often tell folks is that life is like playing chess. So if I make move from move from here to there, I also have to anticipate what are all the other things that could potentially happen and then think about all of the sub things that I need to do to be prepared if I move from here to there. So it's, it's about thinking ahead, it's about connecting all of the dots, all of the dots. So, and uh, what are the short term and long term benefits? So I also want to look at the benefit, the expected and not as likely. And then what might others think about the effort? And this should not prevent one from taking action, but instead, the use prepare a response to objections. What could be learned from the effort? Sometimes the best value comes from the journey, even if the outcome is not as wanted or expected. Some of my best life, life lessons have come from my failures, because we learn the most when we fail, because we have to figure out what went wrong. When we succeed, it's easy. There, a lot of times there isn't a need, or we don't think that there's a need to evaluate it. But I like to, even with, when I have successes, I like to evaluate what went well, and how can I do it better? 
But we learn oftentimes a lot of the best, the best or the biggest lessons um, from our failures. And then what is the worst thing that could happen if um, it could happen? It's normally a lot less than you might think. And then what will be achieved by the effort? And that shouldn't prevent you from moving forward, but it can be a powerful motivator to continue. And then taking all of the previous questions into consideration, is this worth the time, energy, and effort, and the cost, real or perceived, to proceed? And as I said earlier, you're going to tee your time up for those things. You're going to use your time, energy, and effort for those things that you believe are most important to you. So ask yourself this. Is X worth your time, energy, attention, focus, effort, or anything else that's important? And also ask yourself, is X more valuable than your other options? If so, proceed and ask yourself, why am I doing the other things? If not, continue to work on the other things because they probably have more value. And belief is an important factor in moving forward. But close family members or their immediate family members are prioritization and time management. So for consideration, too much time is spent worrying about others' opinions, especially from those who are not known. So the best opinion that we should be worrying about is our own because there are a lot of critics, including ourselves, so we want to make sure we minimize that. But the most important critic, as long as it's positive and constructive, is you. But make sure that we have positive self-talks. So, excuse me, I'm going to go back to the slide for just a moment. So the key message in all of this is that if fear is allowed to get in your way, you're more likely to continue to be the individual you are today without becoming who you could be during your life's journey. So for consideration, this is one of my favorite quotes from Samuel Beckett. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. For consideration, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Sometimes we go through some difficult moments in life, but when we know what our purpose is and we believe that this is our value to our life, our journey, and, and to others around us, including society, it makes it a lot easier to move forward because each of us has a purpose. Whether you've figured out what that is or not yet, if you continue to go forward, you will. And then for consideration, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Martin Luther King Jr. And another quote that I always like to use as my motivation, and I don't know who said this because I've seen it in different sources quoted differently, so I use unknown. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will be killed. Every morning, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be run. So don't let fear get in your way. So how do you jumpstart your beliefs? So strive for excellence and not perfection, as I just detailed earlier. Because seeking perfection can negatively impact your beliefs, striving for excellence builds confidence. So believe the beginning. Even if you don't know if it can be done, take a step in it anyway. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I read an article recently, and there's a young lady that started a business, and it unfortunately it failed. And she said the best thing that she could have done is taken the risk to open the business. 
But what she said that followed that was even more profound in that she said, no one has ever died from humiliation. And I was like, wow, that, that's powerful. So keep that in mind. Even if you fell, no one's ever died from humiliation. And if that's the worst thing that can happen, okay. But you know what? You probably learned something during your journey. So there was some benefit that you might not realize at that moment because your belief system might have got knocked down. But always remember, there's always value in the journey. Understand that each subsequent step gets you closer to your desired outcome. So take a step, it gets you going. Take another step, it gets you closer to where you want to be. Learn from past experiences. Everything that we've done in life, what I like to say is about cumulative moments. So use our cumulative moment to learn and to be better in the future. And then most importantly, make adjustments along the way because that's what life is about. It's about taking a chance, taking risks, following your dreams. If you fall short, it's okay. There's no big deal. Get up, dust yourself off, start again, get moving, and keep going because that's what life is about. So I'm going to leave you with some parting thoughts. Part of thought number one, you can't, you know, throughout our life, our, our folks have said, you can be anything you want to be. And I'm going to tell you, you cannot be anything you want to be. But what you can do is you can work towards anything you want. And then if you fall short of your goals, there's still value in the journey. So that's part of thought number one. Parting thought number two is at times individuals must step away, step back, or step up. You step away if you gave it your best and you don't have more to give. You step back to regroup to try it again later. Or you step up to make a positive difference for yourself and others. Parting thought number three. Do it for you. Remember earlier in the presentation I said, hopefully the reason that you're intending this is for you. It's for me. Right? Do it for yourself. So do it for you, even though others may question it. Do it for you while others don't understand it. Do it for you while others may challenge it. Do it for you, even if you don't completely believe that it's possible. Do it for you, especially if your effort will also help others. Do it for you because positive change starts with you. Parting thought number four. Your beliefs yesterday are important to get prepared for something today. Your beliefs tomorrow will help you to continue your forward progress towards success. Your beliefs today allow you to be the best possible you that you can be at this moment. And this is all that's within your immediate control. So right now while I'm giving this presentation to you, I can't be thinking about what I was doing before this presentation. I can't be thinking about that nice dinner I'm going to have right after this. But what I have to be thinking about is this presentation right now in giving you the best possible me at this moment. And that's whatever I give you is the best me I can give you at this moment. And if you keep that perspective in mind, it makes things that you do a lot easier. So don't think about how much work you put into it and you want to make sure it goes off well, or what happens if you make a mistake during the presentation. No big deal. We all make mistakes. It's just part of the experience. Parting thought number five. Remain in the moment. Keep your mind focused on the current work, and most importantly, enjoy the journey of discovery, because that's what we're meant to do, is to discover things throughout our life, throughout our journey, and share our experiences with others. Parting thought number six. Life is about perspective. So, perspective, the past is over, the present is now, the future hasn't happened. 
There's nothing that can be done to change the past. The present is within your control. And creating and executing a plan now, in this moment, today, will affect your future. Parting thought number seven, roadmap to success. Dream of possibilities. Desire to do more. Determination fueled by belief. Drive to get through the tough times. Decisiveness to make decisions. Dedication to achieve the dream. So, in closing, believe it's possible, enjoy your journey, and be your best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so, Amanda, if there's any questions, I'll open up the floor for questions at this point. It looks like there might be a couple of questions. Thank you, Sly. Yeah, if any of you have any questions, feel free to, to write them down in the chat box. Um, we'll hang out here for a couple minutes to answer any questions. Um, we want to thank um, SL Young, our slides, for doing this presentation this evening. Um, the documents that he mentioned as far as it, that were in the presentation, those will be sent to you in an email after this uh, presentation is concluded. Um, within 24 hours, you will also receive a recording of this presentation if you want to come back to it for reference. Uh, so that will be sent to you as well. Um, so we'll leave it open to any questions. And before I see a couple of folks have uh, typed something, Amanda, but the one other thing that I always like to add at, at the end of my presentation is just be happy. Go listen to the Pharrell song and dance around the room and go crazy because happiness is part of your belief system. All right, so uh, a couple of, uh, I guess that's a statement. Thank you very much um, for that comment there. And do you have any thoughts on fear of success? Or do you know where I can learn more about it? Do you even believe it's a real thing? Well, I'll start with the last part of that first. Yes, there is a thing called fear of success. And I do uh, believe that you can learn to deal with it. There is a book that I highly recommend, and hopefully I won't mess it up, but there's a book from Don Green, Ph.D. And uh, let me think of what the title is right now. And, um, if you bear with me just a second, I'm going to try to sneak over to my bookshelf because I'm going blank right now. Oh, okay. It's Don Green, PhD. It's called Fight Your Fear and Win. I highly recommend this book. I, I've read it um, and use, utilized the information in it several times. And I actually, if you're interested, um, you can send me uh, an email or send Amanda an email. Um, typically, every semester, I give a presentation relative to fear. So I would be more than willing to allow you to come sit in on a presentation on fear, whether it's on campus or if I do it somewhere else. So if you get me your contact information, I will make sure that I, I keep you in mind for future presentations. Um, because I, I have a great presentation that I use uh, relative to fear. And if you'd like to have a conversation with me, you can get your contact information to Amanda, and I can follow up with you after this. Are there any other questions? Scrolling down. I don't see any more, uh, Amanda. Okay, yeah. If you guys have any more, feel, I see a little bit of typing. I don't know if people are just um, leaving the chat room. I am putting up an email address right now. Um, it's our general um, Eli email address for our student life department. So if you guys do have any questions, feel free to email um, that email address. Again, you'll also be getting a follow up email so you can. And also respond to that as well with any questions you have, and I can forward those on to Sly. And Amanda, just real quick, I just I forgot to put up my contact slide. So um, on the on the um, screen right now, what you have on my website. So if you want to go out to my personal website, I have a lot of blogs, I have videos. Um, it's at www.slyoung.com, and then I also have a link to my nonprofit. But you can also ask, access my nonprofit's website from my personal website, but my, web, my nonprofit is called Saving Our Communities at Risk Through Educational Services. And primarily I do a lot of work in a local jail to teach life, business, and um, soft skills. And then there's a list of my published works. I have a book on ethics coming out in the spring. And if you wanted to 
um, receive some inspirational quotes, you can also go out to my Facebook page and like it out there and then follow me on Twitter. And uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me on my website. I'm more than willing to have a conversation with you all after this presentation. So Amanda, thank you very much for inviting me to do this talk today. Thank you so much, Fly, and thank you again, everyone, for coming. Um, so this concludes the presentation. If you guys want to exit the uh, Blackboard Collaborate room, all you have to do is go up to File and Exit, and that should let you out. Thank you, and have a good night.